Hello, Matthews Gatos here. Welcome to section 5.3, part 1. In this video, I'm going to be looking at solving radical equations, and we're going to only focus on equations with one radical in them. The second part of this video will be when I have two radicals. So let's talk about what a radical equation is. It's any equation where your variable is in the radicand. So example, square root of x equals 3. Square root of 2x minus 1 equals 2x squared. Now when we're solving these radical equations, we always have to state the restrictions. So you can't square root a negative. If there's a fraction, you can't divide by 0. And we're also going to introduce the idea of implied or implicit restrictions. So I want to start with the restrictions before we get into solving. So we have um, a radical expression there, the root of 3x minus 4. Now, we can't square root a negative, so we have to look at the restrictions. So whatever the radicand is, it has to be positive. So my restriction starts by stating 3x minus 4 is greater than or equal to 0. And then I can solve for the restriction, isolating x. So I will add 4 to both sides to get 3x greater than or equal to 4. And then I will divide both sides by 3, and I get my restriction is that x is greater than or equal to 4 thirds. Now, we must always state our restrictions. And the neat thing about stating your restrictions is it's a quick way to check the validity of any answer. So if you get an answer, if it was an equation, where the answer was not greater than or equal to 4, you know that you can throw that answer out as being extraneous. So I just want to show you a check on the calculator. There is my graph of the root of 3x minus 4, and you can see that x is in fact greater than 4 thirds. So here is 4 thirds, and notice all my x values are greater than that. So I know I did that correctly. Let's try this one. So in this one here, I have again a square root, and you cannot root a negative. So whatever the radicand is, it has to be greater than or equal to 0. So let's go ahead and solve that. My tip for you in solving this is always make sure that you have a positive leading coefficient. So with equations, especially with inequalities, we want a positive leading coefficient. So I am going to isolate to the side that the variable will be positive. The reason I do that is because if my variable isn't positive, I need to divide both sides of the inequality by a negative sign, and I need to remember to switch the inequality sign. So to avoid having to remember that and making a silly mistake, I am just going to isolate so that my variable is positive. So instead of subtracting 4 from both sides, I'm going to add x. So let's always keep it positive in life and in math. So here that's gone. So I have 4 is greater than or equal to x. Or you can flip it around if you'd like to see x on the other side. Just make sure you read it correctly. x is less than or equal to 4. I always like to check that graphically just to see if I did it right. So let's look at what that radical looks like in the graphing calculator. So there's the graph of the square root of 4 minus x. You can see here is my x-intercept of 4. And look, everything is less than. It's to the left. So I know I did that correctly. Okay, let's talk about quadratic restrictions. So when I have a root like this, the root of x squared plus 5x, any time I have a variable in my radicand, I always want to look at my restrictions graphically. So if the radicand is a quadratic function, put it into the calculator to find the values of x where the function is above the x-axis. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So looking at this, let's bring our, we'll, we'll put this over to the side. There we go. So there's my graph, okay? So looking at my graph, oh, I can pull it over there. Let's get that guy out of the way. So there's my graph of my quadratic, and I am really focused on my x-intercepts. So I have an x-intercept at negative 5 and an x-intercept at 0. I just threw in the vertex there to give you a better idea of what the graph is. No extra charge for that. So I'm going to look at where the function is greater than or equal to 0. So I notice that the function is above the x-axis any time x is less than or equal to negative 5. I notice another place, and that is any time x is to the right of 0. 
So my restrictions for this, putting it all together, is that x has to be less than or equal to negative 5 or greater than or equal to 0. So those would be my restrictions. So again, anytime you have a radicand that is a quadratic, I want you to always look at your restrictions on the graphing calculator. So now that we've talked about restrictions, let's start to introduce how to solve. So how do I solve something like this? If I have the square root of x is equal to 5, well, my tip to you is to remember the inverse operation to taking a square root is squaring. So if I can square both sides of the equation, I can get rid of my root and get my variable by itself. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to square both sides. Opposite of square rooting is squaring, so I'm just canceling those out and I'm left with x equal to 25. So that's pretty basic. Let's up the ante a little bit. How about this one? If I were to solve that, well, I just have a radical. To get rid of my root, I square both sides. So no difference there. The only difference comes when the square and the square root cancel, I'm left with a binomial. So I have x plus 3 equals to 25. Well, you guys know how to solve that. All you have to do is subtract 3 from both sides to get x equal to 22. Let's try another one. What about this one? So this one here is the root of x plus 3 equal 5. So my little tip to you in this situation is that the radical needs to be isolated before squaring both sides. So you only want to square both sides when you have the radical that is isolated. So let's get this up out of the way. So what I'm going to do is get rid of this 3 here. And the way that I get rid of that 3 is by subtracting 3 from both sides. And now my root is isolated, so I can just square both sides, get rid of my square root, and my answer is x equal to 4. So you can see those steps aren't terribly bad. All you have to do is isolate your radical and then square both sides. So really, you already know how to do everything in this lesson. So here are the formal steps. I want you to isolate the radical, state all your restrictions. Do that before you start doing the question because you might forget by the time you come to the end. Then once your radical is isolated, square both sides to eliminate the radical. A little tip I have. If you have a binomial radical and you have to square both sides, I want you to write it out using the distributive property. Okay, so if you have to square both sides and you end up with a binomial, not necessarily a binomial radical, a binomial on the other side. So anytime you square a binomial, I want you to write it out two times to remember that binomial squared is not a binomial, it is in fact a trinomial. So once the root's gone, I want you to group your like terms, simplify and solve. You're going to end up with two possibilities. The first possibility is a linear equation. And in that case, I want you to get the variable on one side, the number on the other. The other possibility is a quadratic. So if you get a quadratic, I want everything on one side, zero on the other, <clears throat> and then you solve by factoring or the quadratic formula. And then remember, my favorite step, the most important step of solving any equation is the check. So let's get ahead and try one. So first thing I want to do is isolate my radical, and then I'm going to look at my restrictions. So I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So I have the square root of 2x minus 3 equals 12. Take away 3 is 9. Next thing I'm going to do is state my restrictions. So you can't square root a negative, so 2x minus 3 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So let's do that off on the side here. I'll add 3 to both sides. So I get 2x greater than or equal to 3. Divide both sides by 2. So I get x is greater than or equal to 3 halves. Okay, there's my restrictions. So my radical is already isolated, I'm ready to go. So I am going to square both sides. Squaring and square rooting, inverse operations, they cancel out. 9 squared is 9 times 9, 81. So I have a nice linear equation. I want x on one side, number on the other. And then divide both sides by 2. And I get that x is equal to 42. 
Okay, so now that I've solved, the first thing I'm going to do is check my solution against my restriction. So my restriction was that x has to be greater than or equal to 3 halves. And yes, 42 is greater than or equal to 3 halves. So the next place I'm going to check is on my calculator. Now because I have variables, remember, the check has to happen in the table. So instead of scrolling through the table trying to find the value I'm looking for, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put my original unchanged equation, the left side into y1, the right side into y2, and I'm going to start the table at my solution, which is 42. So I'm going to go into table set, and just so you know, that's second window. So table set is second window. I start my table at 42, and look, y1 equals y2. So I nailed it. Let's try another one. So isolate the radical first. I'm going to add 8 to both sides. So I get the square root of 3y over 5 equals 2. 8 take away 2 is 6. Okay, now I'm ready to state my restrictions. So you can't square root a negative, so 3y over 5 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So first thing I'm going to do is multiply both sides by 5, 3y greater than or equal to 0, and then divide both sides by 3. And I get y is greater than or equal to 0. Now, if your radical has a monomial radicand, that will always be the restriction. Variable greater than or equal to 0. So now that my radical is isolated, I will square both sides. Square and square root cancel. 3y over 5 equals 36. And then I will multiply both sides of the equation by 5 to get rid of my denominator. So that's gone. I get 3y is equal to 180. And then I just divide both sides by 3 and get y is equal to 60. So first place I check it is my restriction. And y is greater than 0? Yep. Second place I check it is on my calculator. So because it involves variables, my check happens in y equals. So you can see here I put the left side of my original equation in y1, the right side in y2. I start my table, second window, at 60. And I can see y1 equals y2. So I know I did that one correctly. Okay, let's try this one here. Identify any restrictions, verify and solve. So again, first thing that I do is isolate my radical. So I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. And I get that the square root of 3x minus 4 equals 2 take away 12 is negative 10. Now, I hope at this point here, you're going to see that there's something alarming about this equation not square both sides and away you go. I'm going to say it again. The square root of 3x minus 4 equals negative 10. Is that even possible? Well, it is not. Anytime you square root a number, it's the principal root and it's going to be positive. So you can't take the square root of a number and have it equal to a negative. That's impossible. So there is no solution. And just to verify that, I'm going to check on my graphing calculator. So here's my graphing calculator. You can see I graphed the left-hand side of the equation here. So this is y equals 12 plus the root of 3x minus 4, just like I check. And then here I have equal to 2. So actually, wait, what, this is what I did. I did 12 plus the root of 3x minus 4 equals 2. I subtract 2 from both sides. And I did 10 plus the root of 3x plus 4 equals 0. Okay, so you can see here this equation is 10 plus the root of 3x plus 4. This equation right here is y equal to 0. So you can see they actually never intersect. So you can see it algebraically there's no solution and also graphically no solution. Okay, let's try another one here. So I want to identify any restrictions, verify, and solve. So first thing I'm going to do is isolate my radical. Now I notice my radical is negative, so I am going to add root 5 minus n to both sides. Remember, I always want it to be positive. 
so that's gone. So I'm left with n equals negative 7 plus the root of 5 minus n. So to isolate my radical, I'm going to add 7 to both sides, so that's gone. So I have n plus 7 equals the root of 5 minus n. So once I've done that, I can look at my restrictions, okay? So we already have the restriction that you cannot square root a negative. So 5 minus n has to be greater than or equal to 0. So remember, I always want a positive leading coefficient. Keep it positive. So I'll add n to both sides. So I get 5 greater than or equal to n. Or you can flip it around if you like to see it this way. n less than or equal to 5. Now it appears that would be the only restrictions. However... Whenever there is another variable on the outside of the radicand, you have to look for implied restrictions. So what do I mean by that? Implied restrictions. This side here is a principal square root, and I know whatever its value is, it is positive. So if that side is positive, and I have an equal sign which balances my equation, this side here must also be positive as well. So not only is the radicand positive, the other side of the equation has to be positive. The only way this will be true in the equation is if I have a positive on the left side and a positive on the right side. Because on the right side, with the root, it's impossible for it to be negative. So my next restriction is going to be that n plus 7 has to be greater than or equal to 0 as well. So my leading coefficient is positive. Let's subtract 7 from both sides, and I get that n is greater than or equal to negative 7. So I have two sets of restrictions, one for the root and one for the other side of the equation. Now, this will only happen when you have variables on both sides of your equation. So what I want to do is write this together as one restriction if possible. Now, on that quadratic one we did, the restrictions were on opposite ends of the parabola, so we couldn't write it as one restriction. But let's check to see if we can write this as one restriction. So my first restriction is that n is less than or equal to 5. So let me just do that with a different color. So here's 5, and it has to be less than or equal to 5, so it just keeps on going that way. Then let's look at my second restriction n has to be greater than or equal to negative 7. So here's negative 7, and it has to be greater than or equal to, and it just keeps going. I want to look to see, is there any overlap between those two? And you can see between negative 7 and positive 5, there is overlap. So I can combine this into one restriction. So the restriction is going to be that n has to be greater than or equal to negative 7, but less than or equal to 5. So combined restriction all together, n has to be in between 5 and negative 7. So that might take a little bit of practice, the implied restrictions, but I know that we'll get there. So now that I have the restrictions, I'm ready to solve. So my radical is isolated, so I'm going to square both sides, and you can see this is what I was talking about in the steps. If you ever have a binomial that is squared, you must write out your factors two times. I just don't want you guys to make a mistake. So I'm going to follow my own advice and write it out twice. Then square and square root cancel because they're inverse operations. I'm left with 5 minus n. So applying the distributive property, I have n squared plus 7n plus 7n plus 49 equals to 5 minus n. So let's group our like terms here. 7n and 7n is 14n. Okay, so we have a quadratic, and when we have a quadratic, we want to isolate by putting the entire expression on one side, 0 on the other. So I'm going to subtract 5 and add n to both sides. So subtract 5 and add n. So 5 take away 5 is 0 n take away n is 0, so this whole thing equals 0, which we want. Then I have n squared, 14n plus n is 15n, and 49 take away 5 is 44. Okay, so we're going to solve that by factoring. 
Okay, so I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 44 and add to 15. So those numbers are 4 and 11. So I know I have 4 and I have 11. So I'm going to set each factor equal to 0 and solve. So n plus 4 can equal 0 or n plus 11 can equal to 0. So subtracting 4 here, I get n equals negative 4. And subtracting 11 here, I get n equals negative 11. First place I want to check is my restrictions. So I know, based on my radical restriction and my implied restriction, that my variable has to be between 5 and negative 7. And I see a number there that doesn't satisfy that. And that's the negative 11. So right away, I know that is an extraneous root. Just to review, extraneous roots mean they are solutions to the quadratic, but not solutions to the original equation. So it looks like n equal to negative 4 is the only solution that I will check on the graphing calculator. So let's go into our graphing calculator, back to our original question. We're going to put left side in y1, right side in y2, and you can see that negative 4 is in fact the solution. Now, don't worry, if you forget to check this one here with the implied restrictions, you're going to remember to check it in the table. So you see why checking is the most important part, especially when I have a variable on the other side. So always be on high alert just to check that in your calculator to make sure that both solutions work. So extraneous roots are bad roots. They're roots that appear to be a solution, but in fact are not a solution. So I always want you guys to check against your restrictions and in the calculator. And who knows more about roots than farmers? Farmers say, well, I can't take you if you're negative because we just learned you can't take a negative root. So you guys can go on to do your practice questions in my notes, detailed solutions are on D2L, and then you can go on to your textbook questions. So I hope this video helped and I look forward to seeing you for the next one. Next one.